So then, light space and laughter, what's that all about? Well, if you think it's going to be a technical presentation about lux levels and uh, light and square meters and space and how it works, it's not actually about that. It's more about the emotionality of design. So what do I mean by emotionality of design? Have a look at this. Now, this is just the house camera. And then come we here by the slap camera. But... <laughs> So there's a bit of fun, that particular um, video from uh, the Heineken Beer Company, but just talks a little bit about what I mean by emotionality of design. And it's an interesting journey for me because it started many, many years ago when I went to see this particular property, which if any of you recognize it, uh, it's the Art Lover's House in Glasgow, which was designed by the very famous architect, Charles Rennie McIntosh. And when I walked into one of his projects, and I won't tell you which one, I was really impacted by the sense of the space and felt there was something about it that was very special and very unique. And it started us on a bit of a journey into what I call the four levels of design. Now, the four levels of design, look at this, is the basic level of design I call product design, but it comes from a kitchen point of view. You need to have physical products, whether that's wood, stone, um, or uh, units, glass, um, in the particular space. The next level of design I call lifestyle, which is now taking those and adapting them to particular needs of a client. And that's, to be honest, where most designers stop at that level. And you can create some amazing kitchens at that space, and we have done uh, so as well. But the next level is what I call community, which is where we step up to a level, which is really when we start to engage in the heart of the home and the aspects of drawing people into community within the home and the space. And the very final level I call transcendence, which is now about the real feeling of design. When you walk into a space, um, what you're creating and how it um, actually works and how it feels. So there's the four levels of product design in a very, very condensed form. So the Design Museum, when I was up there a couple of years ago, I noticed this quote which I thought was really excellent. Many people share the belief that there is a moral or ethical component design and that design can be responsible for enriching our lives. And that's absolutely what we believe, it's what we work for, and the whole sense of um, enriching our lives. This is a project we did which actually won Sunday Times Small House of the Year, and the brief from the client was they wanted a, um, was a transcendent brief actually, which was we wanted to have a peaceful house or a place of peace. Now that changes for everybody and needs to be reviewed very differently uh, for the inside. But here's just an example of um, the project and how it works through. So how do we approach this in the Maya touch with regard to design? That's all exciting, Keith, and what you've just talked about. But actually, what does that mean in how we approach a design? Well, the first thing we're asking you when you're working with a, with a client is you should be asking yourself, um, how do I want to feel in the space before you even consider uh, what materials you're using? So that's really touched on what I call the emotional and the spiritual aspects of design. The next level we're talking about is who do you want to impact in the space? And that then touches what I call the social aspects and the environmental and how you connect with the outside part of your um, building and your home. Third level, we talk about well, how do you want to live? This is now adapting what I call the practical and relational side, how you actually work in the kitchen space with the people that are engaged in there. And the final level is what I call quality, which is fundamentally about the materials, which is really about budget and how the engagement is with your designer and your kitchen company. So it's quite a, a, an exciting kind of process, but it takes you through, and this is where, for me, where the astute of you will recognize that there's something going on here, and this is what we call the wellness part of the kitchen. How do you create an environment that includes this whole aspect of wellness? So what I mean by that is that at the product level, we're talking about great kitchens, um, that, that really consider the whole wellness of the people within that, how the health-related equipment, which is growing your own food within the kitchen space, and the design of that really is related to the products that you're using. How we live in the context of the connection and the relationship between the people in that space and the products within that space and how we connect to the outdoors 
and the value of being connected to the outdoors is a really, really important part of um, wellness design. The next thing I call is where community fits into wellness. Well, this is actually the social and environmental outreach of how we're connecting with the people. And that's different for different types of people, but how do you draw in people into your home and make them feel safe and sociable and create that beautiful climate? The heart of the home is what we often talk about. And then the transcendent feeling of wellness is actually touching the spiritual and emotional dimension of how that space feels, that it recharges you, refreshes you, does something within there with regard to the colors, the textures, the materials, uh, the feeling of the space and how the whole thing comes together. This, I think, is a fantastic quote, uh, really touches on the impact that design can have. And the Maggie's Center, if you don't know what it is, it's um, a, a life limiting cancer hospice, basically. And I just felt the building enveloped me with love. It's bright, it's light, and the first thing you do is smile. Well, this is a, tr this is a building creating this environment that makes you feel fantastic. And talking about here with bright light and all I do is smile is just a fantastic way of describing what transcendent design can really be like. So, this is a particular um, kitchen project that we um, worked with. And, um, I want to talk about this because this actually, believe it or not, started as a product design where the client came to us with a set of architect's plans and said, can you give me a price for this kitchen? Now, this is actually a fairly costly kitchen because it's got a lot of premium materials in here. But the challenge that I had then is I costed the client's kitchen, but there was a real sense that it wasn't working right in my mind as a designer. So we actually redesigned his plan. and. I gave him a second alternative that he actually went for, and this is kind of what you see here. Um, it created this space for him, which was a complete transformation of where he saw it going to, and actually, in the end, created this wonderful environment. This also is how we um, receive kitchens at the very beginning, before we start work. And this was the design brief for this client, and this is his view over the Spinnaker Tower in Portsmouth Harbour um, in Hampshire. And he is briefed to us that he wanted to connect to the outdoors, and he was very nautical, and he asked us to design a boat-type shape island. And that's what we did here with those of you who are nautical. We'll see that the little breakfast bar is in a Spinnaker uh, Tower, um, so a Spinnaker sail shape uh, from a boat. So it's a very unique design. This particular project um, is our most viewed picture on house, which is really interesting because it just shows you the power of a white kitchen um, and the very clean lines that you see in this space and shows you the popularity of this particular style of look, but also the connectivity to the outdoors, um, environmentally bringing the green, the planting and the garden into the views of the kitchen and how it's also on the countertops as well. This uh, particular project, finalist in Grand Design's House of the Year, which is lovely to see it on TV, and it's lovely to be involved in that project here. This is a beautiful kitchen, really precision design work in this. And one of the lovely views about um, this is when you're standing at the island and you're looking out through that window, you look over the orchard, and you really do bring the outdoors um, in. It's also an incredibly sociable space, as you can see from the large table area. Above the Agra on the left, although you can't see it here because it's reflecting the TV area, it's actually a mirror. But when you're standing at the Agra, you can look in the mirror and you get all the green connectivity outside displayed as well. Now, this is actually what we call biophilic design here, which is part of a wellness aspect of bringing real planting inside the home and building it intrinsically into the kitchen space. Now, this is actually done here with a series of green planting but it can be done with herbs I mean it can be edible food if you wanted to grow your own food within the kitchen space which is quite an exciting thing and I think we're beginning to see more of that and now there's uh, companies bringing equipment out that you can actually grow your own plants in thermally and light controlled units um, and growing your organic type salads on a regular basis. This, um, this is a more classic um, option we actually were a finalist in um, a global competition for this in the Somatics Classic style. Um, and this is really interesting because this is a fairly premium project here as well for a 4.5 million pound house in Ascot. And this actually links beautifully into the space and really talks about the whole flow, the connectedness and the entertainment that's taking place within this home. It still creates a very special uh, environment and a special um, space. The connectivity with this into the outdoors, you can see, because obviously the glass opening doors there that go right out into the garden space really just pulls the whole thing in and what is interesting for us as well is when you look at that little left hand side there we have a stainless steel box that actually the 
edge of the stainless steel goes right up to the edge of the glass. So when you're standing in that sink area, you have a completely seamless view. So it's a very, very strong connection to the outside of the um, uh, views from the house and creates that beautiful um, sense. You can see a little bit stronger here as it just zooms into that space and you can see um, how connected we are to the outside. Now this actually hasn't been landscaped when these photos were taken and uh, for budget reasons it was um, put on hold um, but um, it will look beautiful when it's finished. So that's a very very quick a whistle stop tour through what is normally a 45 minute talk so there's a lot of lack of detail but in summary really what I'm talking about is this whole designing for wellness type feeling within uh, the light space um, and laughter environment and what I've just kind of pulled together for you here is this four sections we're talking about the whole aspects of the emotional and spirituality of design and how we call that experience in transcendence embracing community is all about the social and environmental aspects of design enriching lifestyles comes down to practical and relational and exhibiting excellence touches on the materials and the professionality of that so so basically in a nutshell i'm saying you, you know kitchens and kitchen design to be honest, is really never about the products at all, although they are important. From your point of view, please just consider the best you can afford for the budget you have. It really is worth investing in this key area of your home. Designing with a transcendent vision that really facilitates human connection in our safe spaces, in our homes, and the opportunity to be able to enjoy these spaces is just fantastic and key for what we want to do. Very importantly, the best design always comes from a collaboration with your designer. So find someone who you feel that your values are aligned and you can connect with, who listens and understands. But fundamentally, at the end of the day, great design does create great feelings. But most importantly, have fun in the process because it's a, a big investment for you and it's a big part of your home and what you're trying to do. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, very short talk. Thanks for listening. And like I said, do pick up on my slightly longer talk if you want to delve into this in a little bit more detail, or you're more than welcome to go on our website. You'll find some of this more information on blogs that we do uh, with regard to how to budget your kitchen, other talks we do, designing kitchens in large spaces, designing kitchens in small spaces, and questions like, do designers play it safe? So I hope you enjoy the rest of the exhibition, and thank you very much for your time. Thank you.